Now in this lesson I'm going to show you a little bit about hidden tools, tools that are hidden behind the main ones you see in the toolbox, and then we're going to get into a couple tools just briefly. So a hidden tool. You can always tell there's a hidden tool by this little carrot, little tiny triangle beside the tool. So see that little triangle there? That means there's something behind it. Now see this one doesn't have a triangle, the crop tool. So there's nothing hidden behind it. And normally they're grouped in to similar functions. So tools that accomplish similar purposes are grouped behind other tools. So up at the top here we have um, the rectangular marquee tool. So if you right click over it, you see your other options. It defaults to the rectangular marquee tool, but behind it you have the elliptical, the single row, and the single column marquee tool. So you can go through here and right click on each of them, and you'll see the hidden tools below. Now I'm going to show you a tool that you're going to use a lot called the Zoom tool. That's here at the bottom. Now let's open a document so we can utilize the tool. We'll go to Open Recent. And we'll open the duck that we had open before. Now that tool is selected, the Zoom tool, correct? Now we notice that our options, we have options within that tool up here. Fit to screen, actual pixels, zoom all windows, resize, so on and so forth. This over here shows the plus sign, which means as we hover over the picture, we see a magnifying glass with the plus sign, which means if I click somewhere, it's going to magnify that section. So if we clicked on the eye, we've magnified it. How much have we magnified it? Well, down here in the bottom left, you see 200%. So that shows you your magnification level based upon the original size of the, the image. Click again. We're in close. And now we get to see a lot of the individual pixels that we were talking about before, the little squares. Now if we want to zoom out, we can go back up to here, to the tool options, and switch back to the magnifying glass, but the negative one. And now as we click, we back out again. Now another way to zoom is simply to change the percentage. So you go down here and change it from 100%, let's say you wanted it smaller, to 44. Enter, and we're down to 44. The deal with this is, though, that you're not determining which section you're zooming in on. So if you chose 300%, you went 300%, but now you're at a, a part of the picture maybe you didn't intend to. You can always scroll over and scroll down, but still not as much control. Now, if you notice, when we were scrolling up and scrolling down, this red box over here on the navigator pane, whoops, uh, made that too small. <laughs> there we go. So you can minimize and maximize your palettes here, your tool palettes. So on the navigator you notice there's a picture of the duck, a preview. This red box shows you the section you're zoomed in on. So if you want to zoom into a particular section you can drag it, see how the hand is clenched, grab to let's say the the, the bill you want to zoom in on. Well now you could just continue to zoom from that section or do whatever you want. Or you can use this little bar here, the zoom slider. We're at 300 percent, but if we want to get in closer to that section, we can move that bar over or move it back out, depending on what we want to do. Now remember I showed you we can switch back and forth between the plus and the minus here? Well, there's another way to do that. We're on the minus now, right, which means we're zooming out. Well, if we wanted to change that without going up there, there's a shortcut, as there are many shortcuts. I'll show you to, the place to, to look up all the shortcuts, is if you hit Alt, which you're going to be using Alt a lot in this program. Now, I'm holding down Alt. You notice how it changed it to a plus sign. And I release it. Um, we're back to a minus sign. So depending on which one you're at, hitting Alt will change it, the direction you're zooming. All right, I just zoomed to 100%. Now I want to show you another couple tools. One is the a selection tool. Remember the rectangular marquee tool I mentioned earlier? If we let's go down to the one below it called the elliptical marquee tool. Now if we zoom in, 
let's let's grab the zoom tool first pardon me we're going to zoom in on one of these eyes that looks elliptical to me this one zoom 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 and now we'll go back to the elliptical marked key tool and we'll start at the top of the eye and move down and I actually made it a little off but I was trying to get a size close to the eye so you just click and drag and then you can move it back in the center such as that and now selection tools such as the marquee tool are used when you only want to modify a section of the photo so now if I wanted to modify this whoops I hit a wrong button there somewhere so let me get it back it's still not big enough so I'll deselect if you make a mistake you can always deselect and then I'm going to redraw the elliptical marquee such as that. All right, that's fairly close. So now, whatever change I make, whatever tool I use, it'll only it would only modify. Boy, I messed up again, didn't I? It'll only modify that section within this ellipsis. Now, if I want to modify everything except that ellipsis, I would go to select and inverse and now everything would be modified except that section. The way you tell that is if we go down to 100 percent you notice that now not just the eye is flashing but everything around the border is flashing which shows you that you've inverted it so that what you're really modifying now is everything except what's inside that selection. So I don't want to modify everything outside that selection. I want to modify just the eye. So, if we zoom back in, grab the magnifier, zoom back into the eye, and let's say I wanted to darken that white section of the eye. What we do is we go to Image, Adjustments, and we're going to go to curves and you see this curve chart and we see presets channels um, curve display options you don't need to mess with any of that basically we want to darken it so that what we do is we grab the top of this and we move it down now you notice the inside of that eye is darkening and only the inside of that eye. So this is just an example of what you can do when you just want to modify a section and when you have this box checked preview and you'll see this in a lot of our tools it allows you to see a preview over here and sometimes you might need to move this out of the way your box so that you can see the preview. And the same goes if you wanted to have lightened this we'd go up here. Now you notice the black section is very light and then once you're satisfied with your results see I didn't get the circle perfect so the yellow is now even lighter <laughs> you would hit OK and then just for kicks let's zoom out and now we see a much uh, lighter pupil so that flashing around the selection when we want to deselect we can just go to select deselect like so, or we could have just clicked any other tool and it would have deselected. So there's a, a lesson on a couple quick tools.